Hello, let's look at adding drag and drop functionality in React with React Beautiful Drag and Drop. So to start, let's say I have an application, you know, I have two lists, Pokemon there in my party, Pikachu and Bulbasaur, and, you know, your PC storage, Charmander in there. Now I can see this, but let's say I wanted to add some functionality where I could drag and drop between them. There's this great little library called React Beautiful Drag and Drop. And I'll link this in the description, but essentially it lets us reorder items in a list and even move them in between lists. So if we want to add the drag and drop functionality to this, first we'll go to the sort of boilerplate code base I've made here with uh, React TypeScript and Vite. I just have some initial Pokédex values here using the Pokémon API. I'll link that in the description as well to get our sprites. And this is where we'll start our journey. But first we want to npm install react beautiful dnd and since we're using TypeScripts we want the react beautiful dnd types as well. Wait a couple hours for that to install. So now the first thing that we have to do is add our drag and drop context. This will essentially let us use the drag and drop functionality on any of the child draggable and droppable components within this context. So we'll want to import drag and drop context. Oops, sorry, just drag drop context from React Beautiful DD. Yeah, and then we'll want to wrap our main part of the component here. This is the box. I'm using grommet. The container that I just put a drag and drop context around is all this black area here. Alright, now you notice we get some red squigglies here. That's because we have to add our uh, on drag end handler. This will basically be when we're done dropping a component that we're dragging and dropping it'll trigger this function and there's other functionalities like on drag start etc that you can view in the documentation as well. Now into our droppable containers you can see I have one droppable container, two droppable container, that's one for party, one for storage. Of course neither of them actually work like that yet so we'll go into that component and we have to add two major pieces here droppable and the draggable. Now as you can imagine a draggable will be the component that we're dragging, the droppable will be the area of where we can drop it in. So we have to have draggables as child components of the droppables. So we're gonna we'll wanna go right into that card area, targeting just this red box here. And I'll add droppable. I'm just gonna comment this out for now. So it, it expects a, a function here, but it also needs a droppable ID for it to be able to keep track of where each item is. So you can see you're passing in a header, and that's if it's party or storage. So we'll just use those as our droppable IDs. So we'll add droppable ID equals header dot, we'll just make it lowercase. And then we can even add a type as well. Type Pokemon. This means that only draggables with the Pokemon type can be dropped in here. This could be valuable if we have lists that are containing two separate types of things, like or, uh, fruits or vegetables, right? Maybe you don't want to mix things. All right, so now let's update this uh, how it's expecting it. Okay. So the droppable pro expects us to use a function with some context called provided. And well, I guess you can name it whatever you want, but it'll end up being that droppable provided. It's just kind of context. Uh, of, of the droppable. And within that, we want we can return this, but first we need to wrap it in a div that contains the reference of provided. So provided.interref, and then we'll just unload the rest of the props here, droppable, droppable props. Now, let's go take our cards back here, drop them in there, all right, so now we should have a droppable area with uh, all our cards in there for now. Now, it's still nothing that we can visually see yet because, well, we can't drag anything yet. So next, let's add that draggable uh, part. 
We want to keep this mapping, that's good. But within the mapping of our items, which again, uh, just for some context, the map just looks like a list of Pokemon attributes, right? So, you know, you can use um, an array of whatever you want. Just iterate over that. But we're using Pokemon as an example because Pokemon are fun. So, let's add that draggable component. And since it's a map, we want to add that key. Just move the key over here. Boop. And I need a draggable ID as well. We'll just use mon.id. Right? And this is just to let each draggable component be unique. And then it needs an index as well. And we'll just take our PokeCard component, like this white box with the sprite and the name, that's it. So essentially we're making the PokeCard be the draggable. Except wait, errors. Well, we need to follow this sort of syntax again. So let's map our provided context again to a div element with reference to that provided inner ref again. Now, it is important to sort of distinctualize from this provided, which is the droppable provided, and this provided, which is the draggable provided. So now we just want to unload provided draggable props and also unload provided drag handle props. And now we can move our pokey card into that, to the div wrapper for the draggable. And then we'll put provided.placeholder here. And this will make it so that when you're dragging something, the spot sort of stays there so it doesn't confuse the user. Go to our application, and we should be able to... Oh no, what's happening? Unable to find draggable with ID. So I faced this unable to find draggable issue for a while and finally came across this little solution here. Now I'll link in the description to where I found it here. But essentially there's an issue I guess with React strict mode. The better solution to disabling strict mode is to create this wrapper of the droppable component and this should solve all our problems in theory so and I'll link this repo in the description so you can copy paste this code if you don't want to type it in by hand but let's just go into our droppable container and we don't want this droppable anymore but we do want the strict mode droppable and we'll just replace this with strict mode droppable and save Ah, look at that, I can drag Pikachu around, and I can drag Bulbasaur around. But, if I drag them into other containers, nothing happens right now. So, but we do see, if you look in the log, the component has been dropped every time we drop one. That's because in the Pokemon drag and drop, and in the main component where we added the drag and drop context, the on drag end handler is logging that. So we have to add some functionality for when we're dragging and dropping between lists. This is where some, I guess you could call fun, comes in. You can customize this however you want or need to. But I'll provide some example functions for uh, for the functionality here. So in our main component where we added the drag and drop context, instead of having this an inline function, just delete that, we'll want to make a function up here. We'll call it handle drag end. And it's going to take uh, results parameter of type drop result. And we'll have to import that from React Beautiful. Now, we're going to have a couple parts to this. We're going to have to check where it's dropped outside the list. If it's the same container, we just sort of want to reorder it. And if we're in a different container, we want it to handle the source and the destination. So that means, you know, removing from the source list and adding to the new list. And then we'll have to set the new Pokedex values, because I'm calling uh, you know, this Pokedex, which is a good starting point. Uh, you probably know this by now. But we'll have to add our React state for Pokedex. 
So to start, we're going to need to get our source container, and we'll get that from the result. It's just result.source, pretty straightforward. And then we'll need to get the destination container, result.destination. Wild, I know. And now if it's dropped outside of the list, we'll do if not destination, meaning the destination is undefined or null, then just return. So now if it's the same container, that'll be if source.droppable ID is equal to destination.droppable ID. This means is the source where we're dropping it the same as the destination where we're dropping it? Okay. Otherwise, then they're not the same, obviously. We'll have different handling for that. So to start, if it's the same container, we'll want to add a little reorder function. I have a utils file that I'm going to be importing from. So I'm just going to export const reorder. And we're going to want a couple things. We're going to want a list of my data type, which is iDraggable Pokemon. I'll just show you what this looks like. It's just that ID name and sprite like I showed before in main.tsx. Looks like this. And then we also need a starting index and an ending index. And these will both be numbers. And then we'll want to start with the result. Just unpacking the list. And then our removed oops, item. We want to save that when we splice from the result from our start index. We just want to take that one out, right? Splice and index zero removed to place the item that we just removed in the correct position in the new array. Now we'll return that result. So now back in my main component where we're adding our handle drag end functionality. We'll just create a new items variable or const equal to reorder and we'll want to pass some values. So we'll unpack the Pokedex. We need to know uh, what to get from right because I have party and storage in my Pokedex. So I can actually use the source oops dot droppable ID because I'm setting these uh, as the same thing. So this will be storage or party, because remember I was using over here the header, and those match up with. And then our starting index is the source index, and end index is the destination index. And then we need to set the correct Pokedex category. So we're going to have to create a temporary Pokedex. So we, so we created our reordered list of items based on the current Pokédex, and then we created a temporary Pokédex and set the correct, and in this case we'll say party, uh, to the new items. And now we just set Pokédex to temp Pokédex. Now let's go test it out. And we can move Pikachu, blow Bulbasaur, and back and forth. Quick recap, if you have like index here instead, is a common mistake, and you're draggable when you're mapping your array into draggable components. You can often move one, and then after that it gets messed up, can't find the ID. So just make sure that this is not set to your index, but actually the ID of the element that you're iterating on, right? So if I have Bulbasaur and Pikachu in a list, um, I want the ID of that Pokemon, not the index of the item in the list. So now we can reorder between one, but I can't drop in between each list. So let's add that functionality. If it's a different container, then we need to handle source and destination. Let's create our source items, and we'll need to create a remove function. And then when we add it to the new list, we'll also need... We'll get our destination items based on this, but we'll need to append an item at a location. Let's go into our utils again and we'll create a couple functions. Now for a move, I need that list again, that array of Pokemon. This is whatever you're using for yours. And I need to know the index at which we are removing. And then 
it's pretty similar to the last one. Unpack that list again. And then this one's a little more straightforward. We just splice the result, removing that. Same as the above reorder, except we don't add it back in. We just return from there. All right, now for Appenda, a little more complicated, but not too much. Uh, we needed that list again, and we need to know the index where we're appending, and we need to know which Pokemon we're appending. This will be of the data type of whatever you, the list is, right? But just a singular. singular. Again, we want to unpack that list, splice the Pokemon into the index that was specified, and then we're just going to return that result. Now back in our handle drag end function, we'll fill out these remove and append at calls respectively. So for remove, I need a source of the Pokedex. So Pokedex of source droppable ID. So if the source is party and the destination is storage, i.e. I drag Pikachu from party to storage, this will be party, and so it'll take this block. And then I need to know the source.index. Alright, and then for append at same thing, except we want the destination ID and the destination index and Pokedex of source ID of source index. So we take storage, the storage structure, just has Charmander in right now, and the destination index, which should be right here, and then the party and then the index at whatever. So it would take this. All right, so now that we have that, we need to set our new Pokedex values. I'm gonna create that temporary Pokedex again, uh, source side of it and set it to our source items. And we'll take the destination side of it and set it to our destination items. And then we'll just update the Pokedex overall again and hit save. Now let's check it out. If I drag Pikachu over, it moves to the storage container and I can reorder within that and move back over, and I can even empty out the storage container and put back in. There you go. There's your React Beautiful drag and drop functionality. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, and don't forget to water your code.